Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm Rush Jeffrey. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. What a wild week six there was in college football. We were treated to tons of great matchups, a lot of upsets, and a lot of games that have made a big impact on this Week 7 AP Top 25 poll. I'm going to go over every single team's ranking in the Week 7 AP Top 25 poll in college football and see whether I agree or disagree disagree with these rankings. Georgia is the number one team in college football. To no one's surprise, for the seventh straight week in college football since the beginning of the season, they have struggled a bit at times this season against the Auburn Tigers and the South Carolina Gamecocks. But against Kentucky last week, they absolutely demolished the Wildcats, who were ranked number 20th in the country last week. Great win for Georgia. And I think that this win shows a lot of people that Georgia is still a really dominant football team, especially when they're clicking on all cylinders. They're going to have to keep that up for the rest of the season if they want to maintain the number one spot in college football. But that Kentucky win definitely deserves to keep Georgia at number one, and they have a date with Vandy up next on the road, which you would think would be an easy win to keep Georgia at number one. Michigan's at number two. They destroyed Minnesota last week on the road, 52-10. to 10. Both Michigan and Georgia played great football last week. Obviously, it's not enough for Michigan to supplant Georgia, but the Wolverines have definitely supplanted themselves as the clear number two team in college football. They have a date with Indiana at home next week. You would think, like with Georgia at Vanderbilt, it should be an easy win for Michigan, but you can't take any team for granted. Ohio State is at number three, and they won against Maryland last week, and they move up because the Texas Longhorns lost last week. Ohio State has at Purdue up next. The Buckeyes have struggled a bit, but they do have that big win on the final play of the game against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, even though Notre Dame is not looking as impressive lately. But Ohio State, like I said, because Texas lost, I think that they have to be the number three team in college football. Number four, you got Florida State, who also moved up because Texas lost. They beat Virginia Tech fairly easily at home. The Seminoles look good, but they've been a bit up and down. They had the bad game against Boston College. They were able to squeak out a win at Clemson. They got the LSU win as well. I think Florida State for now deserves to be at number four, but there's definitely a possibility if the Seminoles slip up or if other teams play better than Florida State down the stretch of the season, I could see Florida State falling from this spot in the AP rankings. Oklahoma moves up to number five. They're one of the biggest risers in the AP Top 25 poll after their big win against the Texas Longhorns in the Red River rivalry. They were down by three points late in the game, but Oklahoma went all the way down the field and scored a touchdown on a drive and only took the Sooners about a minute. And that was really impressive by Dylan Gabriel, and it shows you that Oklahoma is much better than last year. Will the Sooners make the college football playoff or even win the Big 12? I'm not 100% sure about that yet, but for right now, I think Oklahoma, it makes sense sense that they move up all the way to number five, even though I think some people can make an argument that they could have only moved up to around six or seven. But I think the reason why Oklahoma moved up to number five, besides the fact that they went over Texas, was super impressive, was that Penn State, Washington, and Oregon all had buys last week. If those teams had been impressive in wins against opponents last week, I think that there's a shot that they would have stayed ahead of Oklahoma. But since they all had buys and Oklahoma played so well, that's why they got surpassed by the Sooners. But Penn State has a game with UMass up next. That's an easy game for them. But for Washington and Oregon, they play each other. And whoever wins the game next week, whether it's Oregon going on the road beating Washington or Washington getting the home win over Oregon in that big Pac-12 robbery, they're going to move up and the other team might stay in the top 10 if it's a close loss. But if they do lose by more than a couple scores, they probably will fall out of the top 10. So that's a massive showdown in week 7 of college football. It's definitely going to impact where both these teams are ranked. Texas is at number 9. They fall 6 spots after losing to Oklahoma. I think there's an argument that could be made that they could have fallen to around 7 or 8. But again, with Penn State, Washington, and Oregon all having buys, the AP voters decided to keep them in the same spots, move Oklahoma ahead, move Texas behind. I understand it. There are arguments to be made that could possibly have these rankings going a bit differently, but I can see what the AP voters were going for. Texas, it was a close loss. They're still in the top 10. It's not like they dropped too far. They're still in the college football playoff race, but now it puts all the pressure on Texas to not drop another game. But that was a classic red River rivalry showdown. Just Texas fell on the short end of the stick in that game. USC is at number 10. They fall another spot for barely beating Arizona in three overtimes. USC strolled against Arizona State, Colorado, and Arizona. All teams at USC should have beaten by more. The Trojans defense is struggling mightily. And Caleb Williams, I really feel for the guy. He's doing everything in his power to keep trucking USC along. They've got tougher opponents coming up, including Notre Dame on the road this coming up week. 
USC is going to have to do a better job on the defensive end, or eventually they are going to drop one of these games. But even if they keep struggling and barely win it, it's punishing them in the AP poll, and it's going to make it a lot harder for them to make the college football playoff if they have a shot to do so. Alabama's at number 11, and there's an argument that Bama should have gotten to number 10 and USC should have fallen to 11 because that was a tough road win at Texas A&M. Granted, Alabama made some mistakes. They weren't perfect, but that was a much better win than USC's win over Arizona. Texas A&M is one of the best environments in college football. Alabama's looking better, and if the Crimson Tide can continue to improve as the season goes along, maybe Alabama has a slight shot to backdoor the way into the college football playoff. It's not likely, but for now, Alabama holds at number 11 with an argument to be in the top 10. North Carolina moves up to number 12, and they blew out Syracuse last week, 40-7. to Great win for the Tar Heels, because I think some people thought that they would look ahead to Miami, but they did not, whereas Miami did look ahead to North Carolina, losing to Georgia Tech, but we'll get to the Hurricanes later on down the road in this AP Top 25 reaction. North Carolina, though, again, looked really good. Drake Mad, the best game by far of the season, and I think North Carolina at number 12, until proven otherwise, is an okay ranking, but I'm sure a lot of people think that the Tar Heels probably aren't this good. Ole Miss is at number 13. They beat Arkansas last week at home. A little bit of a shaky win, but they got the job done with other teams losing. That's why Ole Miss moved up. They have a bye next week, so the Rebels can take a break before they've got some tough games coming up down the stretch of the season, so we'll be able to find out for sure really how good Ole Miss is by the end of the season. Louisville's at number 14, and they're the other big riser in the AP Top 25 rankings, just like the Oklahoma Sooners. Louisville beat Notre Dame. It was an impressive win. They turned Sam Hartman over tons of times, just like Oklahoma did to Quinn Ewers, but Sam Hartman had even more mistakes than Ewers. He had five total turnovers. It was an awful performance by Notre Dame. Their defense looked gassed, and Louisville, to their credit, is 6-0. and Do I think Louisville is one of the best teams in the ACC? That's debatable. I think Florida State, North Carolina, and even Clemson are still better than the Cardinals as of now, and even Miami when they're playing at their best, but I think Louisville's a good team. They've proven they've been able to get by with wins over Georgia Tech, Indiana, and NC State in close fashion before their big win over Notre Dame. The Cardinals are going to have to keep it up. They got a tricky game at Pitt next week. Can't overlook the Panthers, but I think that number 14 for now is okay for the Louisville Cardinals with the way that they've been playing, and we'll see if they can keep it up. They got a fairly easy schedule down the rest of the season. Can't overlook any opponents, but if Louisville can go 10-2, maybe we'll see them in the ACC title game. Oregon State's at number 15. Last week, they won at Cal. Gave up a lot of points to the Golden Bears. Gave up 40 points. That was poor defense from Oregon State, but I think Cal has been getting a bit better, but still a win is a win. Oregon State's 5-1, and one, still in the Pac-12 title hunt, and possibly could backdoor the way to the college football playoff if they won out. That's highly unlikely, but Oregon State's got a tough matchup against UCLA, who just got a big one over Washington State. That should be a big showdown of the Pac-12 in Week 7, but I think number 15 for Oregon State is all right for now. Utah's the number 16. They had a bye last week, and they have Cal at home. Utah definitely needs to play better on defense than Oregon State did against Cal if Utah wants to get an easy win. They need Cam Rising back. There has been some reports that he might be available soon. I think that the Utah Utes, if they won't have any shot of doing some damage in the Pac-12 down the stretch of the season, they need Cam Rising back, or they could fall out of the top 25. Duke's the number 17, and they're in the exact same boat as Utah. They had a bye last week, and their quarterback, Riley Leonard is injured, but if he can return soon, I think Duke still has a shot to be dangerous in the ACC, but if he is out, it's going to be really tough for Duke to be able to sustain the success they've shown so far. They have NC State at home this week. I think that's a game Duke can win, but without Riley Leonard, it's a game that NC State could possibly get an upset win, especially because the Wolfpack played some better offense against Marshall last week. That's going to be an interesting game, so Duke needs Riley Leonard back, or just like with Utah, I feel Duke could possibly fall out of the AP Top 25 in the future. UCLA is a number eight Team. They beat Washington State at home last week. Big win for the Bruins. They have Oregon State on the road up next. Whoever loses this game is not going to fall out of the top 25 unless it's a blowout loss. I think that UCLA has proven to be a really solid team this season. They have some flaws like most teams in college football do this season. But for now, especially with that win over Washington State in the fashion that they wanted it, I think UCLA deserves to be at number 18. And trailing behind the Bruins is the Washington State Cougars for their loss to UCLA. Washington State fans were riding high after that win over the Oregon State Beavers. That was a huge win that got a lot of Cougar fans believing they had a shot to maybe even win the Pac-12. But unfortunately, they came back down to earth at UCLA. Yes, that was a tough game for Washington State. But Cam Ward, he's been playing great football this season. But he struggled at UCLA and they could not get the win. Washington State definitely deserves to be in the top 25. But it does not like the Cougars are anywhere close to a top 10 team. 
Then you got Tennessee also tied at number 19. They had a bye last week, and they have Texas A&M at home coming up next. That's actually a tough game, even though it's at home in Neyland Stadium. Texas A&M has shown that they are a solid team this season. Without Connor Wegman, though, that really hurts A&M's ceiling. But Max Johnson did have a solid game against the Alabama Crimson Tide. They just came up short. But Tennessee, right now at number 19, but they cannot overlook the Aggies, or they could fall out of the top 25. Notre Dame falls to number 21. They now have two losses. They lost at Louisville this past week. And to give Notre Dame the benefit of the doubt, they did have a tough stretch with games against Ohio State, Duke, Louisville. And now they got USC coming up next. It is at home against USC. But Notre Dame's probably had one of the toughest four-game stretches that any team is going to face in college football this season. But Sam Harmon still really struggled on the road. And Notre Dame made a lot of mistakes. I can definitely understand why they fell 11 spots. But I think that the Fighting Irish should be ranked for now. But if they lose to USC, they could fall out of the top 25 next week. LSU's number 22. They got a big win at Missouri. They have Auburn at home next week. Auburn's not a bad team. LSU cannot overlook the Tigers. Or LSU could fall out of the top 25 just like Notre Dame if they lose as well. So I think that LSU right now at number 22 is a good spot, even though they're only 4-2. and two, But they do have a couple of decent wins over Missouri and Arkansas. Jay Downs is fantastic on offense, but the defense needs to improve. But the Tigers, a very polarizing team, I still think should be at 22 for now unless they lose next week. Kansas is at number 23. They enter the AP Top 25 poll this week. They blew out Gus Malzahn's UCF Knights. That was an ugly performance from UCF. Kansas, even with Jason being a quarterback, has been playing well. I think Jalen Daniels gives Kansas the higher ceiling, and they need to get him back if Kansas wants to have any shot of getting to the Big 12 title game. But I still think Jason beats a solid quarterback, and he's been getting the job done for the Jayhawks. But they have a date at Oklahoma State up next. That's not an easy game because Oklahoma State got a big win over Kansas State this past week. But for now, the Jayhawks deserve to re-enter the top 25. Kentucky, and then you have Miami of Florida, both still in the top 25. I'm actually shocked about that. I thought both teams would fall out after Kentucky's awful performance against the Georgia Bulldogs getting shellacked. And then Miami having one of the worst play calls in history with only 33 seconds left in a football game. You can kneel the ball. Georgia Tech has no timeouts, and they would have won the game. Miami decides to run the football. They fumble, and then Georgia Tech scores the game-winning touchdown with two seconds left. Unbelievable. Miami fans are so upset at Mario Cristobal and the offensive coordinator at Miami. It's unbelievable that that happened. But somehow the AP voters still think Miami should be ranked at 25. Kentucky, I can see a little bit more because they have that win over Florida and Georgia's the number one team in the country and it was on the road. But I do think that Kentucky and Miami, there is an argument that they should not be ranked. In the other scene votes, you got Missouri and Wyoming, two teams I thought would be ranked because Missouri had a close loss to LSU and they were at number 21, but they fell all the way out of the top 25. I can understand it to an extent because they gave up so many points to LSU and LSU's barely in the top 25 as well. But I do think that the Missouri Tigers have an argument to be 25th. And Wyoming, they beat Fresno State. Granted, Wyoming has a loss to Texas, but they did beat Texas Tech and that went over Fresno State's pretty solid as well. Again, there's an argument for Wyoming and Missouri. I understand why the AP voters left Kentucky and Miami in, but Missouri and Wyoming are two solid teams. Air Force as well, you can make an argument, could be ranked. They're undefeated playing great football in the Mount West. If all three of these teams keep winning, they could definitely find their way into the top 25. Then you have Wisconsin, Tulane, West Virginia, who's been playing solid football, saving Neil Brown's job. Clemson, Maryland, Iowa, James Madison, and Texas A&M. Those are the teams that round out the AP Top 25 poll this week in the other receiving votes. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about the Week 7 AP Top 25 poll. A lot of movement, and this is the first week where there's a lot of teams where I'm not really understanding why they're ranked where they're at. I get why most of the teams are ranked where they're at. I can at least reason with the AP voters, but there are definitely some rankings that just do not make sense to me. But again, let me know what your thoughts are on the AP Top 25 poll and which teams you feel should be ranked in different spots versus where the AP voters have them. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Follow me on Twitter as well. Link is in the description, and I'll see you next time.